Good morning and welcome to our service coming to you from Cedar Creek Presbyterian Church on this um, Sunday morning, August the 16th. We're glad you're joining us, uh, whether you're joining us live this morning or you're looking at the DVD later or watching it on YouTube later. We are glad you're with us and it's going to be a great time of worship and hope all of you are continuing to stay safe and, and healthy and blessed in every way. We're glad you're here this morning and pray that um, the Lord will be with you and be with us as we're bringing you this worship service this morning. Welcome to worship today. We're so glad that the Fresh Hours are here with us today. We hope that you are taking your place under the shelter of the Most High where nothing can touch you, no danger, no demonic force, no plague will come near your dwelling. We're here to worship the one true living God, Jesus Christ, and his spirit fills this place. And our prayer is that the Holy Spirit will also fill the place where you are today. Join us as we pray. Heavenly Father, we give glory to your name. We lift you high. We, with all the angels of heaven, say holy, holy, holy. We love you with all of our hearts. Pour out, pour out your spirit upon us. Pour out your spirit within us. May we be your representatives here as we worship you in spirit and in truth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Join us in our opening praise. I cast my mind to Calvary where Jesus bled and died for me I see his wounds his hands his feet Savior on that cursed tree. His body bowed and drenched in tears. They laid him down in Joseph's tomb. The entrance sealed by heavy stone. Messiah still and all alone. Oh, praise the name of the Lord our God. Oh, praise his name forevermore. For endless days we will see.
sun shall pierce the night and I will rise among the saints my gaze transfixed on Jesus' face Oh praise the name of the Lord our God Oh praise His name forevermore for endless days we will see
sermon scripture is John 14, 15 through 21. If you love me, keep my commands, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever, the Spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees because it because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he lives he lives with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans, I will come to you. Before long the world will not see me anymore. You will see me, because I live, you also will live. On that day, you will realize that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. Whoever has my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me. The one who loves me will be loved, loved by my Father, and I, too, will love them and show myself to them. I want to thank you for singing in your praises today. And Leslie is praising God for fun and creative ways to teach remotely. Boy, Leslie, you can do this, girl. We know it. And all the teachers, we, we are just praising God for you, that we know that you are you're doing fun things, that you are doing creative things to lead your students, even though they're not up close and personal. We have a great praise today. It's a testimony from Callie. And you know that Callie has just now, on Thursday, went to, she has gone to Lee University. And uh, we are missing her here. However, her praise is, this is yesterday. Tonight, I went out with some of my new friends. And on our way back, we heard singing in the yard. So we went to see what was up. There were five other freshmen worshiping and absolutely pouring out their hearts to God. My friends and I joined them, and my heart was so full of joy. That was the happiest I've felt in a long time. We worshiped well past midnight, and then we decided to all pray out loud together. There were tears in my eyes, and I just knew God was confirming in my heart that I was where I was supposed to be. Thank you, Callie, for sending in that great testimony. We are praying for all of our college-bound students. Our Marcus is gone now. He's flown the nest. And Katie has gone to UT. And Emily's going to start. And we know that Josie and all of her friends at Tusculum, they're getting ready to start, too. And so we are praising God for you, and we are believing for great things. Thank you, Brady, for reading uh, scripture this morning. Um, I've preached the last two sermons uh, on a scripture based uh, from uh, the 14th chapter of uh, John's Gospel, verse 6, where uh, Jesus said in, to a question that was asked by Thomas, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can, comes to the Father except through me. So I want to continue today with um, uh, a sermon based on uh, two scriptures, one that um, Brady read for us this morning from John chapter 14, verses 15 to 21. Then also um, we'll touch on uh, the 16th chapter, verses 5 through 15. But let's back up a verse uh, just prior to where Jesus answered the question um, asked by Thomas, uh, to set the stage for the response that Jesus made. Prior to that verse, uh, verse 6, Jesus told the disciples, When everything is ready, I will come and get you so that you will always be with me where I am, and you know the way to where I am going. Uh, that set up Thomas's question to him, Lord, we don't even know where you're going. How can we know the way and so in the two previous sermons when we looked at this scripture 
we determined that the way that Jesus spoke of was not the destination to where Jesus was going, but it was about the journey to that destination or to the where that Jesus spoke of. Thomas's statement and question in verse 5 indicated that Thomas didn't know either the destination of where Jesus was going, nor did he know the way to that destination. Go back and we'll go back and read verse 5 again, where Thomas said, No, we don't know, Lord. We have no idea where you're going. So how can we know the way? And of course, that verse set up Jesus' uh, very familiar and famous uh, response in verse 6 I am the way, the truth, and the life. Some of you from my generation, I'm going to age myself, and the folks sitting here this morning as we're broadcasting and taping uh, are too young to probably know this group. Now, Laura might know it, uh, coming from a musical family. And that, that group was the Andrews Sisters. Now, it doesn't ring any bells. It does with Marcy, though. She's that generation. Huh? They had a song called Show me the way to go home. And it has uh, the lyrics, part of the lyrics says this, when I'm happy, when I'm happy, singing all the while, I don't need nobody then to show me how to smile. But then it goes on to say, when I've been out on the spree, and we will not elaborate on the spree, tootling down a street with this little melody, everyone I greet, Show me the way to go home. I'm tired, and I want to go to bed. You don't remember that song? I do. That's why I figured you would. When the disciples were with Jesus, they were kind of like the Andrews sisters. They were happy because they had a leader, someone to guide them, someone to teach them, to show them the way. But now they were dealing with a revelation from Jesus that he was leaving them. And he was going somewhere, as Thomas expressed, that the disciples didn't know where. And they didn't even know how to get there. Unlike the Andrews sisters who asked everyone they saw to show them the way home, the disciples still had Jesus with them to explain both the destination and the way they would get there. And in our scripture lesson today, we will see Jesus' answer to the disciples about how they would reach the destination, and just as important, how they would be making the journey to that destination. But before we get to Jesus' answers of Thomas, the younger folks in here this morning will be able to answer this one. So listen up. Before we get to... Uh, Jesus' answer to Thomas, can anyone remember a children's fairy tale that has some of the same themes as Andrew's sister's song and the question of the disciples? Hmm? Which one? Ah, okay. How about Hansel and Gretel? Hmm? Does that ring any bells? You don't know that fairy tale? No. Okay, you're going to get to hear a little bit of it. Okay. All right, Hansel and Gretel were a brother and sister, like Brady and Ava. They were taken by their parents one day deep into the woods, and they were left alone. Your parents would never do that. But figuring out that they need to find their way home again, as they went into the woods, they began to drop little pebbles along the way so they could find their way back home. And sure enough, after the parents left, they went and traced their way back home, picking up the pebbles. Once again, the parents took them to the forest, but this time the children had no pebbles, so they dropped breadcrumbs along the way. And you know what happened? The birds and the animals ate the crumbs so they couldn't find their way home. 
Then they encounter a wicked witch who entices them into her home where eventually they overcome the witch and they took all her treasures and they went back home to their family. Now obviously I left out a lot of the details, but the moral of the story is don't trust strangers and don't disobey your parents. The other moral is, is that just like the witch, Satan will try to get us to go a different path, to go a different way. But we have the words of Jesus about how we can not only find our way home, but how we can make the journey to our home. Well, let's look now at our scripture that Brady read for us this morning from John chapter 14, verses 15 to 21. The disciples' concern was about how to get to their eventual destination. Who would guide them along the way home? Jesus answered that question in verse 16. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate, a comforter, or encourager, or counselor. The Greek word there is paraclete, which for the disciples' journey also carries a meaning of supporter or helper. And during Jesus' time with the disciples, he was their guide. He was their supporter. He was their helper and their comforter and counselor. But when he is gone, this paraclete would be the Holy Spirit, who in verse 17, Jesus said, would lead them into all truth. And the word truth, as used by the Gospel of John, is not just a summary of statements or doctrines, but the truth is a personal encounter with Jesus. Remember John 14, 6? Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. By giving the paraclete of the Holy Spirit, Jesus was assuring the disciples of his ongoing revelation of himself. Go back to verse 17, John 14, 17, and we'll see what Jesus said about the paraclete or the comforter. He is the Holy Spirit, Jesus said, who leads into all truth. The world cannot receive him because it isn't looking for him and doesn't recognize him. But you know him because, and this is going to be key, so focus on this part of verse 17. But you know him because he lives with you now and later he will be in you. The phrase, he lives with you now, obviously is speaking of the physical presence of Jesus with the disciples. But the phrase, later he will be in you, points to the manifestation of the Holy Spirit that would come on the day of Pentecost. Let's look at the two places in Scripture where the paraclete and the Holy Spirit is manifested to the disciples. First, John 20, verse 22. This verse occurred when Jesus appeared to his disciples after his resurrection. And in verse 22 and following, John wrote, and he spoke, speaking of Jesus, he spoke and he showed them the wounds in his hands and his side. They were filled with joy when they saw the Lord. And again he said, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I am sending you. Now notice next what happened. Then he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. This was the disciples' born-again experience. Just as the Holy Spirit comes to be with us when we are born again, when we accept Jesus as our Lord. That's the first occasion of the Holy Spirit interacting with the disciples after the resurrection of Jesus. Let's look at another set of scriptures from Acts chapter 1, verses 4 and verse 8. 
This was just before Jesus ascended into heaven. And once again, he gave the disciples instruction about the paraclete or the Holy Spirit. They had already received the Holy Spirit in John 20, 22. But now Jesus said to them in verses 4 and 5, Do not leave Jerusalem until the Father sends you the gift he promised, as I told you before. John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. And then in verse 8 he continues, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. This power that the believers would receive from the Holy Spirit would include courage. It would include boldness and confidence, insight and ability, and authority to continue the ministry of Jesus. This paraclete of the Holy Spirit will be their guide, will be their comforter, helper, and supporter on their journey to the Father. Notice in these scriptures that the disciples had two encounters with the Holy Spirit. First, when Jesus breathed on them in John 20, 22, and they were born again. And secondly, when they were baptized with the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost. The Bible teaches this is the pattern for all believers. And the reason many Christians struggle on their spiritual journey is that they haven't had that second experience of the Holy Spirit baptism. In one of his books, Derek Prince illustrated it this way. He wrote, quote, We can sum up the difference between the two experiences of receiving the Holy Spirit by associating them with Resurrection Sunday and Pentecost Sunday. On Resurrection Sunday, it was the resurrected Christ, the inbreathed Holy Spirit, with the result, eternal life. But on Pentecost Sunday, it was the ascended Christ, the outpoured Holy Spirit, with the result, power. This experience of the disciples demonstrate that salvation or the new birth and the baptism of the Holy Spirit are two distinct and separate experiences. Obviously, this morning in our sermon time, we don't have time to go into great detail. But if you're interested in trying to and come into an understanding of these two experiences, go back and take your Bibles and read the Gospels particularly, and especially the verses related to the person and the work of the Holy Spirit. And read the book of Acts. And as you read, ask for the Holy Spirit to guide you in all truth, as Jesus said. And reveal to you both the person of the Holy Spirit and how the Holy Spirit is your guide on your journey with Jesus. And we can be assured of this. He will show us the way, the way to go home. He will be with us on that journey with the same power that the disciples had as we continue the ministry of Jesus. Join with me in a time of prayer, and I hope is, uh, that you'll take that challenge to go back to the scriptures and read what the Bible says about the work of the Holy Spirit and come to an understanding that it is those two experiences, born again, when the Holy Spirit is breathed into us and the power that comes from the baptism of the Holy Spirit to fill us that we might do the ministry of Jesus. Join with me in a time of prayer. Father, we thank you today for your word and thank you for the spirit of truth, your Holy Spirit, who reveals to us the things that we need for our journey to help us to go home with power and authority with boldness and that we have the assurance of your comforter your presence the presence of Jesus through the Holy Spirit fill us today baptizing us with your power in Jesus name Amen
We continue now with our worship as the fresh hours uh, lead us and the comfort has come. We invite you to join us at home as, as they sing and you sing along with them. As we sing our hymn, The Comforter Has Come. Let's take a moment to just become very aware of the presence of God within us. Let's just still our hearts. Breathe in his presence. Reach out. Touch the face of God. For he is with us. He is for us, and he is in us. We give you glory, Heavenly Father. We worship you. 
the times that we have where we're so unconscious of your presence. We're so distracted with the things of this world. And all of a sudden, your Holy Spirit rises up within us and says, I am here. I am here. Everything is going to be all right. We praise you, Lord. We praise you that we are your children. And you tell us to boldly come before your throne and receive the help we need, the mercy, the grace, the love. Jesus, we worship you and we give you praise that you are the one that made this all happen. We could never thank you enough, Lord Jesus. We love you. We adore you. We passionately pursue you. You are our everything. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit of God, Holy Spirit of Jesus, fill us, inflame us. Let that fire burn brightly within us and let us shine that light for all to see. Heavenly Father, we pray right now for the people we know that are sick. Whether they are sick with COVID-19, that, that tool of the devil, that, that invader from the depths of Hades, we're not having it. We're not having it. And we say to people who are sick, be healed. Be healed. Megan Smith, I don't know your new name. But Megan, be healed in the name of Jesus. Mabel Lamb, be healed in the name of Jesus. Father, for others who need your healing touch, we know that healing belongs to them. We know that healing is your will because of Jesus paid for it. We pray for Curtis Will Hoyt to be restored to complete health. We pray for Diana Brooks. And Heavenly Father, we pray for Renata, who needs a house. She needs her house loan to be approved. She needs, Heavenly Father, that if this is not the right house for her, that you show her the right house and make it available. A gift, a gift of love from you to her and her family. Father, we want to praise you right now for that peace accord between Israel and UAE. We praise you, Lord. And we pray that that spirit of peace will spread across the Middle East. Bring peace to your people, Lord. Father, we also pray for our students from the youngest to the oldest that they would excel this year, that even though this year is different, that they would still rise to the top like cream. And we pray that you would guide their choices of friends. Surround them with godly friends, Lord. We pray your protection from those who would lead them astray. And we believe you for it. We believe you for them to grow into mighty men and women of God who will change this world. We pray for our teachers, Lord, that you will bless them. You will protect them. You will inspire them. We pray, Lord, for our medical workers, for our first responders. And Heavenly Father, we pray that you protect them from every disease. And COVID-19, we address you in the name of the Lord Jesus. COVID-19, you are nothing more than a name, just as cancer is nothing more than a name. And at the, at the name of Jesus, the name that is above all names, 
you must bend your knee. We command you to submit to the Lord Jesus Christ. Heavenly Father, we pray right now for our nation. You see our nation. You see the spirit of division. The spirit of division, you are not from God. In Jesus' name, we command you to cease and desist your attacks against the people of God. We thank you that our nation is a nation that holds out the light of the gospel. And we believe you, Heavenly Father, that you are not through with the United States. But there is great revival, great revival to come, and great revival going on right now. And we praise you for it. Heavenly Father, we pray for our president, for our vice president, for their families, that you would protect them in every way, that you would bless them. We pray, Heavenly Father, that you would give them supernatural wisdom about how to govern we the people. We pray that you would give them supernatural success in every godly activity. Heavenly Father, we declare peace in this nation. We declare the peace of God to reign. Heavenly Father, we pray a special hedge of protection around our police and around our military and our National Guard. A special hedge of protection, Lord, for they are the ones who protect us. We pray especially for Bill and for Craig for Dustin, for Cam. We pray for Emily as she works to support them. And Heavenly Father, we thank you for our church. We thank you for this wonderful group of people who may gather together in groups of two or three and that they will speak the word of God and they will take authority and they will say the kingdom of God is here. And we take our stand for righteousness, peace, and joy. We say no to violence and anarchy. We thank you, Lord God, that you have said that the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy. And Father, we ask that we be a witness to the kingdom of God that it is present in our midst, that we represent Jesus well, that people, when they see us, whether we are the youngest, whether we are the oldest, or anywhere in between, they will say there's something different about them. And Lord, that difference is you. We dedicate ourselves to you. We give ourselves to you spirit, soul, and body, that we are the living sacrifices that proclaim that the kingdom of God is here and we're carrying it with us. Father, I pray your blessing upon this church for everyone who is listening, your blessing and your protection to be over them. And we believe you for it. And as we take up our assignment, getting ready to leave this place, of concentrated worship, we pray the prayer that you taught your disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I want to continue to thank you for um, sending your uh, tithes and offerings in. Um, just as a reminder, uh, you can continue to... Uh, Support the church financially uh, through either PayPal or you can mail your checks to the church. But we, uh, we appreciate you continuing to support the ministry of the church 
um, and that the blessing of God will be upon each one of you. So thank you once again. And now join um, as a fresh hours lead us in our doxology. <laughs> Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and now receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace now and forevermore. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Have a great week. God be with you till we meet again. By his counsels, God upon you. With his sheep should curly fall. protecting us.